In this section, we can now deal with the local complications of inferior alveolar nerve block technique. The local complications of inferior alveolar nerve block technique includes needle breakage, paresthesia, transient facial nerve palsy, Christmas, pain on injection, soft tissue injuries and edema. We shall now discuss each of them in detail. Let's start with needle breakage. It is rare nowadays because of disposable injections. Some of the common cause of needle breakage are bending the needle, sudden unexpected movement of the patient, use of short needles and use of fine needles. At this point of time, I want you to pause the video and think for an answer. Why is the use of short needle a causative factor in needle breakage during the administration of inferior alveolar nerve block? The hub of the needle is the point of weakness in the needle design. The short needle will have to be inserted up to the hub to reach the target area of inferior alveolar nerve block. This will increase the likelihood of breakage of the needle and so it is recommended that the long needle should be used. Methods to prevent the needle breakage are use 27 gauge needle, use a long needle, do not insert the needle into tissue to its hub, do not redirect the needle once it is inserted into the tissues. Management When the needle breaks and is visible, stay calm. Instruct the patient not to move and keep his mouth open. Hold the visible fragment with a small hemostat and withdraw. When the broken fragment is not visible, do not incise or probe the area. Calmly inform the patient, take a radiograph and determine if it is superficial. Then take a decision if it has to be removed or kept in place and followed up. Causes of paresthesia are trauma to the nerve using local anesthetic solution, contaminated by alcohol or sterilizing solutions, insertion of needle into the foramen, hemorrhage causing increased pressure resulting in paresthesia. Prevention of the paresthesia can be done by proper handling of the needle and local anesthetic solution and following current technique of injection. Management will include wait and watch as most of the paresthesia resolved within 8 weeks without treatment. Sequence for management will be reassuring the patient. Examine the patient and regular follow-ups. If sensory deficit is still present for more than one year, consult a neurologist or oral surgeon if needed. Causes of facial nerve paralysis Transient facial nerve paralysis caused by the deposition of local anesthesia into the capsule of the parotid gland which is located in the posterior border of the mandibular ramus. Prevention is by following proper technique of injection. Sequence of management for transient facial palsy is to reassure the patient. Any contact lenses should be removed, an eye patch to be applied to the affected eye or manually close the eye periodically to keep the cornea lubricated. Lubricating drops can be prescribed if necessary. At this point, I would like to pause the video. Think and answer, how will you prevent a transient facial nerve paralysis by accidental injection into the deeper lobe of parotid? The deep lobe of the parotid forms the posterior border of the pterygomandibular space. The needle will enter the deep lobe when directed too far posteriorly while administering the inferior alveolar nerve block. To prevent this, the syringe has to be withdrawn, redirected mole laterally onto the contralateral side to reach the target area. The next complication we will discuss is the trismus. Onset is in about 1 to 6 days post treatment. Causes of trismus are trauma to the medial pterygoid muscle during the injection, local anesthetic solution contaminated by alcohol or cold sterilizing solution producing muscle irritation, low grade infections. Let's take another pause here and look at this image and determine what method can be followed to prevent the accidental injury to the medial pterygoid muscle. The anterior border of the medial pterygoid muscle is medial to the pterygomandibular raphe. As such, entering the needle lateral to the raphe will ensure you will remain lateral to the muscle and prevent injury. So let's look at the methods to prevent trismus in detail. A traumatic injection techniques, avoid repeated injections, use sharp, sterile, disposable needles. The management of trismus is heat therapy 
by warm saline rinse, appropriate analgesic and muscle relaxant if necessary. Physiotherapy for 5 minutes every 3 to 4 hourly. If presence of infection is suspected, then antibiotic therapy for 7 days to be prescribed. Improvement generally starts within 2 to 3 days and recovery ranges from 4 to 8 weeks. Surgical intervention may be needed in some cases. Soft tissue trauma to the lip or the tongue caused by biting or chewing these while they are anesthetized especially children. Prevention is by keeping a cotton roll between the lips and the teeth. Warn the patients and their parents. Self-adherent warning stickers can also be used. Management is symptomatic and includes analgesia for pain. Antibiotic if there is infection. Warm saline rinse to aid in decreasing the swelling and petroleum jelly to cover the lesion and minimize the infection. Lastly, we can talk about edema due to inferior alveolar nerve block. Now rare after introduction of the disposable needles and glass cartridge. Causes can be trauma, infection, angioedema, hemorrhage, injection of irritating solutions, alcohol, cold solutions. Management of minimum degree of edema is just analgesia for pain and will resolve in few days. If large degree edema and signs of infection, antibiotics should be prescribed and incision and drainage should be considered. This brings up to the end of the session. In summary, the best way to prevent local complications is to adhere to the set protocols and follow the automatic injection procedure.